Hey folks, time for a quick little video about the interesting feature that's coming in .NET 6 and some related features already present but I feel are not really well known and it's about compile time logging source generator and also high performance logging with .NET. So I'll come back to these pages in a bit but let's go immediately to the code. So I have this simple code here when, where we have three uh, logs. I'll show you the implementations in a bit, but if you, we run this, we'll see that it's basically logging the same thing three times. So the, the idea is not that we are logging different stuff. We're logging exactly the same stuff, but in different ways. So in this case, the first one, let me open this here. And the traditional log is just what we are used to. So we have a logger. You can see here I'm creating an idle logger just because this is not ASP.NET Core. I'm not injecting anything. I'm just creating things so we can see. So creating a, a logger and the usual stuff. Log information, a message with a template. And then we pass in the parameters, some integers, some string, some record. And that's the thing that we saw somewhere here. And that's the result. So it replaces the parameters. So this is the common thing that we do. I guess most of the times. So, but in .NET, I think it was 2.1. Let me check. Like go here, 2.1. It's here. Go to two zero. It's not so. It's two dot one. Uh, but there was introduction of high performance logging with logger message. And let's see here. What we can do is use this logger message, and it will return an action, and it's generic, and we pass in some things. So we can define a delegate to call the logging. And as you can see, then calling is calling the delegate, passing in the logger, the, the parameters, and it's done. So it's much more verbose than the one above. But the advantage is in terms of performance, as we can see here. So, for example, there are differences in performance when there is boxing. So when we are here, so this is an integer, so it's a value type. When we use this message defined log, because it's a concrete type, it won't need to box when we call this log something action. But over here, when we pass here, if you notice this log information signature is, receives an object array. So the value type, the integer, will be boxed to fit here. So even if it's more verbose, higher performance. And also, uh, when we call the other way, the extension methods parse the message template multiple times. And by using the logger message, it's parsed once, and then it's reused. So this is a, an interesting way to have higher performance in logs. I would assume that depending on the types of applications you do, you won't replace all the instances of this with this because it's more cold. But depending on the situation, for example, if it's a log message that we write on all requests to an API. So maybe in that case, that is worth the optimization. Or maybe you just have an application that needs higher performance, so you'll do this everywhere. So this was already present before .NET 6, so this is nothing new. Yeah, and just a shout out to this commented part, which is interesting that we can say that we want to skip the check for the log level. This might be interesting if we are, for example, when we want to call the logger, we have a complex object or something to create and we might want to avoid creating that object 
if we are not going to log. So we, we can check before, and if the logging is enabled, then we create the object and then we pass it to the logger. But by then we can say to the logger, you don't need to check again because it's already, I checked before. So I just kept it here for, for a quick shout out. So, but as I was saying, better performance, cool, but it's much more work if we would do this everywhere. Instead of just calling one method, we always need to define uh, a delegate and then create the call the method. So the interesting thing here in .next 6 is the compile time logging source generation. So in .next 6, we can do this and you'll see what's going on in a bit. So we have the logger and we are calling log something on the logger. So this is an extension method. And I created it here. So this is a static partial. This is important. Static, static partial void. All these methods need to be like this. Uh, it doesn't need to be an extension method from what I'm aware, but it just reads better. So I did it. And we just put the static partial void method with the things that we want. And uh, we don't define it. But then we decorate it with this. We just put it here, read better. So we decorate the method with this attribute, logger message, and we define, and you can see that the things we are passing here are the same that we used here in the logger message define. So passing the event ID, some random stuff, the level, and the message template. And you see that these match the ones here. Uh, this one, this one, and this one, this one. So what happens is with source generators, which were introduced in .NET 5 and C Sharp 9, when a method has this signature, it generates this code uh, even more strange. But so we can go here and just F12 into it. And we can see that there is some generated code here. And we can see here, this is for ignore this part. This was another test that I was doing, but this part. So generated this method, which gets those parameters. It checks the um, if the logging level is enabled and then calls the callback, which is that action, but with a lot of namespaces and stuff here. So it's not really very readable. What did I do? I don't know. So, so it's not very readable, but at the end of the day is basically the same as I showed you here in the define message. But the difference is that I just created a method here and decorated it. So it's a bit less work than defining it by hand. Not a lot less code, but a bit simpler. So I guess this might make this feature, this high performance um, logging feature more used because it's easier to, to do, I guess. But still, it's more work than just calling the, the typical log information. So I don't expect everyone to just start using this everywhere. But again, as I was saying, imagine you have a, an application and you want to log something in every request. So this might be interesting. For example, you catch an exception. Eh, maybe for catching exceptions and logging, it's not that interesting because exception handling is already pretty heavy. So the logging is probably not that much. But for the rest, for other cases where it's on the hot path, you might consider using this. And this new way of doing it is probably a little bit easier than this one. You just create a class somewhere with some extension methods and shove everything in there. So this was just a quick video to shout out to this new feature and this not so new feature, but that it's not so used. So it's pretty interesting and there's more things. I think there's also, besides the message, there's also scope. We can define a scope 
because scopes we can pass parameters as well and avoid boxing and stuff like that. So yeah, so I would encourage you to take a look at these these docs if this is interesting to your your current projects. And this one coming in .NET 6, it's pretty interesting. So let me know in the comments what do you think about these features. Uh, do you think it's useful for your use case or your use case is not high performance enough for this to be useful? Do you think the new way with generation, it's more, it's easier, not so much? Or do you think there's it was, would be great if there was a way to make it even simpler? Yeah, so I would be interested in knowing these kinds of things would be good feedback for the .NET team, but at first glance, this approach seems pretty interesting. So again, let me know your thoughts in the comments and see you later. See you.